Hello everybody, welcome back to Reaper Minis TV. We're going to start off this episode with a trio of dwarf warriors to look at. First up is Garen Goblin Kicker, and he's a dwarf hero. I really like that name, Goblin Kicker. That sounds very evocative of a heroic dwarf that's been on many adventures. Now this is a single piece miniature, and as you can see from the video here, mine had a significant amount of cleaning that was necessary for it. I don't know if this is standard for all of these. I kind of doubt it. I may have just got one out of a batch that just came up with a lot of metal webbing, as you can see, around the perimeter of the figure. So that's going to take me a couple of minutes at least and a steady hand to clean up. The most troublesome part is probably going to be around his face itself, where it goes into the crevices around his eyes and beard and just in that general area. I like the pose that he's in. He sort of looks like he's bashing forward with his shield and then about to come down with his hand axe in a blow against an enemy. Even though he's in the Dark Heaven Legends line, I think he would do very well in a Warlord Dwarf army. I could even see using him as the champion of a unit of dwarves in Warhammer Fantasy Battle, or obviously as a player character in pretty much any kind of fantasy RPG you might have. Next up we have Lorgan Duneflint, and he's a dwarf fighter, and he's unique in many ways and really just stood out to me right when I popped him out of the blister initially. The most immediately noticeable thing that makes him unique is that he's a hairless dwarf, at least from what you can see where he's not wearing armor or a helmet or anything. He has no beard, no mustache, no hair uh, on his head, no nothing. So a completely bald and clean-shaven dwarf is something you don't see every day. The next thing that stood out to me was his shield. It looks like a giant tortoise shell. And then you have his axe, and it's got a really huge blade, but it looks like it's carved out of or chipped out of a big piece of stone. So between the tortoise shell and the stone axe, he might be some kind of savage dwarf or feral dwarf, or maybe he just lives in a, a jungle, and that's where he got the the tortoise shell or by the sea or something like that. So very unique. I think it has a very stylized look to it because it's different. It's not just your normal armor plated hairy dwarf. So I like it. It's a little bit different. May not be to everybody's dwarf taste, but I think he's pretty cool. And then our third in this trio of dwarves is Thurge Threeforge. He's a dwarf hero. And he goes back to your more stereotypical kind of dwarf where he's got a big axe, lots of armor, big horned helmet on, and a big bushy beard. He's in a fairly static pose where he's just holding the axe and ready for action but not really doing a whole lot. The blades of his axe have a nice bit of detail sculpted on them. On the front, it has the skull of a dragon. It's kind of small and a little bit hard to see, but also the skeletal wings of the dragon. And then on the back, it has the tail of the dragon and then the skeletal wings again. So some nice added detail there. It is a little bit plain, but I think he'd mix into a unit just fine if you were going to use him in a unit of dwarfs in Warlord, or he'd fit in better maybe as a champion in a unit, a rank and file unit for Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Okay, on to some chronoscope figures now, and first up is Bonnie, a futuristic heroine, and she is very reminiscent of the heroine or main protagonist named Alice in the Resident Evil movies. Bonnie is a single-piece miniature. She's armed with two machine pistols that she's got in her hands as she's firing the one that's in her right hand. She's also kind of leaning back a little bit. She has two pistols that are in holsters and also two sawed-off shotguns on her back, so she is definitely loaded for bear, or probably zombies in her case. Cleaning was limited to a few faint mold lines, but she was pretty much ready to be based and primed in no time at all. I think that she'd be fine, obviously, in a futuristic game that she's built for here as a futuristic heroine, but even in, in a modern game, a modern horror game, or zombie apocalypse game, she'd be just fine in that. Next up, we have Tommy the Wolfman, and this should remind you at least a little bit of the movie I Was a Teenage Werewolf that starred Michael Landon. The character in that movie was named Tony, not Tommy, but anyway, this one is wearing a high school letterman's jacket and a pair of jeans. His wolfman legs and arms and neck and head have bust through his clothes along with his tail that's popped out the back of his jeans. So it's a well-sculpted miniature here. Nice detail, especially on the fur. Just going to be kind of limited in terms of use. Obviously, I think you could use it in a horror game, but beyond that, you might not have a whole lot of use for it. But good figure nonetheless. And our last chronoscope blister to look at this time around 
is a three pack of zombie strippers. Now, first off, all of their naughty bits are covered either by tassels or g-strings. So other than the fact that they're strippers, they're pretty safe for anybody's gaming table. I don't think you should have any problems with that. Now, all three of them are in various states of damage or a little bit of decay. One of them is holding the severed arm that his hand is still clutching a bunch of dollar bills from one of her customers. And as you'd expect, they've got dollar bills stuffed in their g-strings, so they were at work when the zombie apocalypse took place, and then they got turned and are now ravaging the rest of the population. So you could drop these into All Things Zombie or a modern Call of Cthulhu game maybe that's kind of zombie centered or maybe even a near future game where there's been some kind of calamity or zombie apocalypse. Our only warlord figure for this episode is a spirit wolf for the Kaboralus faction and this is a single piece miniature. It comes with a cavalry base and being a spirit wolf you can see the wolf nature of the figure but it also has this wispy kind of ethereal form to it all along the top of the model and then down by its feet. If you weren't going to use it in a Kaboralus army for Warlord, you could use the Spirit Wolf as an animal ghost, a ghost brute in Dungeons & Dragons, but otherwise your uses might be a little, little bit limited here. And we'll go ahead and round out this episode with my favorite of this batch. This is from the Dark Heaven Legends line. This is a witch, and you actually get three figures in this blister. You end up getting a witch, a cauldron, and a cat, her familiar. The witch is carrying a broom in her right hand, and in her left hand she's got a bat that she's about to toss into the cauldron, I'd expect. She's wearing a pointed hat that's pretty stereotypical of a witch, and her clothes are really ragged and just kind of hanging off of her. Very skinny, very ugly, and is really what you'd expect or imagine a witch to look like in a fantasy game. There was a little bit of cleaning needed on the witch. There were some little bits of extra metal from the casting process and a few visible mold lines, but nothing that took more than a minute or two to take care of. The cauldron also needed some cleaning. Similar kind of things there. There was a mold line that was visible and a couple little bits of metal. There are some ethereal sort of like ghost-like little beings that are swarming around the top of the cauldron. It's a very neat effect that's on the pot of bubbling goo here. It could have just been left with nothing there, but it is a nice extra added detail or effect that the sculptor put on it. And then we've got her cat, which I would expect everybody would paint up as a black cat, which is, again, what you'd expect for a witch. Now, for me, I'm going to be using this in my Warhammer Fantasy roleplay campaign for when we get to the Witch's Song adventure. But until then, or if you're not playing Warhammer Fantasy roleplay, you should be able to easily drop her in as a witch, as a good antagonist for any band of adventurers. All right, thanks everybody for watching Reaper Minis TV. We'll see you next episode.